Hi. Here I am again sharing something with you while it's fresh. <laughs> In the middle of the night when I wake up and the Lord shows me something. And I want to talk about it before I forget. Um, I think I have a perfect analogy to help some, some people understand. And I've had some people ask me to keep talking about this sort of thing. And I think this helps explain it better. So just hang with me here. Hear me out. You can act like a kangaroo and do the things a kangaroo does. You can go hop around in the outback and do all those things, but does that make you a kangaroo? You know, no, that just makes you look like a person acting like a kangaroo it does not make you a kangaroo okay likewise you could really be let's say you really were a kangaroo but you were um, injured or sick or not in your natural environment optimal for kangaroos you know say you were swimming in the ocean or something <laughs> and you're you may not be acting like a regular kangaroo does in those circumstances, but you're still a kangaroo, you know? And I don't know why kangaroo, that just came up. <laughs> it's just a, an example that I picked that made sense to me. So likewise, there are people that can act like a Christian and do things the Christians do, but not be a Christian, not be born again, not be saved. You know, we know there are Christians that go to church and go through the motions, and there are people that don't necessarily identify as Christians, but they do a lot of the things Christians do, and uh, as far as like behavior or moral behavior and things like that that a lot of Christians are known for. But it doesn't make them a Christian. Likewise, there are born-again, saved believers that don't act like uh, Christians should according to guidelines in the Bible or, you know, display all the fruit of the Spirit or anything like that. But they're still truly born-again, saved believers, children of God. Because they're you know, sick, injured, or in the wrong environment, not getting nourishment they need. Well, you know, I had made a video a little while back about just doing versus actually being. And when we as believers walk in the Spirit, we have the fruit of the Spirit against which there is no law. And we do by nature those things as we're walking in the Spirit that believers that 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 believers do that are good and and profitable and uh, pleasing and all of that because we are the person that God you know made us to be and then you know so. And, and commands that tell you what to do or guidelines for Christian living of how we should live as believers and all of that. You could read those all day and follow those all day, but it doesn't make you that person. And if you're not doing it naturally from a place of walking in the spirit, it's striving in your flesh, see? And it, it it's not real, but... So, so what are all the guidelines there for? They're so that, because you know commandments and laws and, and guidelines show you 
that if you're if you're healthy and everything's going right, this is how things should be. This is optimal for you, for who you are as a child of God in Christ. And but they can't make you that person. You see what I'm saying? They can make you pretend and clean the outside of the cup. The only thing that can make you that person is Christ in you. And you walking in the Spirit, standing on those, those truths. Walking in the Spirit is, you know, walking by faith and not according to your understanding. You're renewing your mind with the Word of God. You know, Christ is in the Word. And... And that's how we behold him in his word. You know, in, in, in the New Testament, the ministry, um, the things we learned after, you know, from the ascended Christ that Paul learned and taught and Peter and John that tell us um, who we are in Christ. And who Christ is and what he's doing, what he's accomplished. And we stand on those truths and uh, bring every thought captive to agree with them in our situations in our life. And that's walking by faith and not by sight. That's walking by the Spirit. It's in spite of what we feel. It's in spite of our circumstances. And <clears throat> that's how we're nourished. That's how we have the right environment. That's how we grow. We've got to have truth you know we got to renew our mind wash in the water of the word okay and um so if you see the commands in then you know different things of how we should live as believers or how we should be living and what should we be doing in the new testament and you see <clears throat> that you're not doing a lot of those things or you're doing the things that they say are the works of the, of the flesh. That's a guideline for you to say, hey, well, I'm not walking in the spirit. What's wrong? Why not? What what false doctrine, doctrine am I believing? Am I failing to stand on the truth? Uh, you'll realize you're not walking in the spirit at that point. You know, which probably none of us are going to do perfectly because we still have this flesh, this treasure in jars of clay. But it's a way for you to think, okay, you know, what do I need to adjust here? I need to be resting in Christ, you know. Something got me off. And so that's really, since the commandment, a commandment can't bring you life or make you anything other than a, a pretender. All it can do is be a guideline for you because you already are, if you're saved, you are alive in Christ, a new creation of Christ. You are a believer. So if you're not acting like it, then something's a little off, you know. But just trying to do those things and striving in your flesh is, is just really walking in your flesh. <clears throat> and it can't bring about any real results. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, what was fresh on my mind. And I hope that helps if someone does stumble across this that doesn't get it yet. I love you guys.